Hello everyone and welcome to Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration. And in the last stream, well, quite a lot happened and there were various sort of cal calamities and catastrophes and things broke here, there and everywhere. And oh, my list of notes is about 100 lines long. So let's not mess around, let's get on with the video. The first problem we ran into was a horrendous shortage of ion stream over here in the in the spaceport. And this meant that ships were arriving, but then they weren't able to refuel, and so they weren't able to leave. So you can see over here, this one's only this one's only about half full and all its tanks. So up here it's wait it's still waiting for there to be that more than thirty six thousand and we're only at twenty thousand. So yeah, we're not getting we're not getting the, the fuel through, the ship isn't going to leave, so that's uh, that's causing some problems. And as you can see, there's quite a lot of ships stacked up here now. They're all just sitting here waiting and they can't leave because, well, there's, there's no fuel for them. So that's, that's a problem. So we traced it back a little bit to over here where it's being produced. This is the cloud storage area, we're, so we're making we're making the ion stream here, we're pumping it into these tanks, and in theory, well, it's gradually filling up. We've got, actually, we do, we've got pretty much enough for a train to come in and pick some up now, so hopefully it'll come in and take it to the right place. But we were having problems because um, the train was coming in like this, and it was taking it away, and all of it, was disappearing into the deep space science over here because as I, so, as I told you about last week there's a thing it, the the ion stream gets dropped off here and then it gets put into ion stream canisters over here every single time this machine makes an ion stream canister it puts in a thousand ion stream into it and and then each one and, and then it requires one of those for every single um one of these naquium energy datas it's producing and then those are getting ripped through up here in order to make the catalog ones and so we're getting through enormous quantities of ion stream over here and we just we just could straight up we just couldn't cope and if that wasn't enough of an issue, we're also ripping through enormous amounts of power at the same time as well. So if we look back over sort of ten over the last uh, ten hours, you can see these crazy spikes up here where the particle accelerators have gone up to taking thirty three. I think I think they actually got up to thirty six gigawatts at one point, which is a phenomenal amount of power. That is literally half the power that the entire entire base is, or the entire Norvis and Norbit bases are using. Um, and yeah, that's that's a bit crazy. So we, we couldn't really have that. That that was that wouldn't do. And so the the reason they the reason it was quite that bad was because over here in, in this area we'd I'd, I'd come along and I'd filled up all of these machines and all of these beacons with tier four speed modules just to try and get enough ion stream flowing through because as I say, getting through so much of it. So I thought make the machines faster, make them faster, make them faster, make them faster. And so they were gobbling up obscene amounts of power. And when I say an obscene amount of power, well there would have been 11 and a half modules worth of it, because you can get 4 in here and 15 in here, of which you get 50% um, uh, effectiveness or efficient effectiveness of them being passed over to the machines they're 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 well affecting. Eleven and a half speed module fours means an energy consumption increase of well that's going to be about uh, about twelve hundred percent I think. So these machines, which which even 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 at the best of times take a hundred megawatts, would now have been taking easily uh, probably a gigawatt and a half each. And yeah, we we just we that was that that was unsustainable. We couldn't we couldn't cope with that. And so I've t I've pulled it down a little bit. I've put in these efficiency modules, the green ones in there now. So now, as you, as you can see, we're now only using plus four hundred percent. So we're using five hundred megawatts instead of instead of fifteen hundred or whatever. Now it does mean they're a bit slower, granted, but at least, but it's still it's it's still much better. It's much more sustainable, and I think we can get we can compensate by having having more machines with some efficiency modules in them. And also, so, so these are then, as I said, pumping into the into the tanks over here. I've also helped compensate for that by by turning off the station down here. So uh, this station. Is now deactivated. I've set the train limit to zero, so a train will never bring up will never bring ion stream out to this station. And so, because we still need ion stream over here, I built an additional ion stream production facility over in the in the deep space area. So you can see it's, it's coming off on the other side because I thought, well, the 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 recycling probably isn't going to expand this far out. It'll probably be okay up there, and there's a decent amount of space here. So this is a straight up copy paste of all of the machines that were making the uh, the, the making the plasma. So we've got lo all of them over here in exactly the same numbers we had over on the other side because. It did seem to be producing just about enough ion stream when it was running flat out. Uh, and then, then, then another copy of all the machines down here. Uh, this time, I put in some slightly better um, product, no, some slightly better efficiency modules. But I've not put any in the in the um, beacon up here. And I think this might be wrong. Actually, I could I could make this significantly more effective and efficient by moving these by moving uh, two four of these modules into this beacon, and then just having the speed threes in all of these ones. So maybe I'll, I'll switch that around next time because because these these efficiency sevens are going to be quite expensive. They're not so efficiency sevens; they're efficiency fives. These efficiency fives are going to be quite expensive to make. 
And so if I can save, well, I, I would save 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. I'd save 12 of them uh, just at the cost of using a few more tier 3 speed modules and get exactly the same effectiveness. Well, not quite exactly the same because some of the efficiency would then be pushed over to these ones as well, which would slow them down, but I think that would probably be all right. Um, and so I've, I've come up with a quite a nice, what I think is quite a nice design along here. So we've got we've got the beacons affecting all of the, uh, all oh, nearly all of the plasma machines across the top. Apparently these two have, have, have been missed by it. Uh, so actually I should have pushed everything in a little bit and, they would have, and it would have worked better but the theory what the idea was when I was designing it that was that we'd have um we would have as many machines falling in under under this beacon as possible and yeah I, as I say I seem to screw that up a little bit I could have pulled this in a little bit and put this beacon here instead which is four squares over to the to the left which would mean I'd also be able to move this one four squares over to the left as well and they did okay there's still have been a little bit of a gap in there but it would have made it would have meant I'd have got slightly more speed out of some of my um some, some, some of my plasma generators but that's but I think it's fine it's going to be producing enough plasma to produce enough iron stream to keep the science happy down there so I built all of this up and everything was lovely everything was hunky-dory for about 30 seconds and then all of the iron stream production shut down again and this time it was because we'd run out of chemical gel chemical gel is the other thing that goes in here to make the um make the plasma stream I, I had to bring up the uh, the rare metals and the and the uh, lithium from down on the ground, but we've got a, we've got a train that rattles up and down and and can do that. And oh dear, the the, the warehouse is full. I'm going to need to do something about that as well. In theory, it's nice and simple. It'll bring up the resources we need. They'll get sorted out to wherever they need to go, and we'll and we'll just burn through them. But we we get through a lot of lithium making the uh, making the uh, plasma to make the ion stream. But we also get through, as I said, a lot of chemical gel. So that very very quickly became a problem. The chemical gel is being produced over here in the recycling area because this is where we start off with all the different fluids and things. So around here we're doing things like making the cosmic water that gets stored in the tanks here for a train to take away. Then that's passed down to here where it's made into chemical gel that's then again passed down into a, to, a, to a train for it to take away. And then again, and then that's passed down on and on and on and we make and we make the uh, the thermofluids down here and and so on. So all these sort of all these sort of things were being done over here and, and this was kind of working uh, as it had been working for. It's probably been at least a year since we built it. I don't. I don't know. I couldn't tell you exactly. But it's been running for a long, long time, um, and it's been absolutely fine. But then suddenly, putting in all this demand on the ion stream production for the uh, for the deep space science meant that it was just completely insufficient. So it needed some expansion. I started off, as you, uh, you won't be surprised to hear, by dropping in this beacon here and then putting speed modules in the machines, and that helped a little bit, but then in about uh, five seconds after that, I realised that we completely ran out of pet petroleum gas up here, so as you can see the train's bringing more of it up, so we are now sort of kind of, things are a little better now, but at the time we had a complete shortage of this stuff and that just wasn't working. And that was because we couldn't bring it up from Norvis quickly enough, because we had one ground train coming over here, bring it with a load of with a load of ion stream in it, much like we've got here with the light oil. And then a train would come down from space, would park next to it, would fill up from it, and then the train this train would go off to fill up, and the train and, and then this this train would head up into space. But it wasn't. But this sort of system wasn't working for the kind of throughput we needed, and so. I've changed the system around here a bit. I've put in these tanks that allow us to have a buffer here, which means even if the even if the petroleum gas train hasn't come back round again, there'll still be some stored here to fill this train up. Because the petroleum gas train brings over about one and a half trains worth for the um, of the space trains. Because the space train wagons are slightly bigger, but there's fewer of them in the in, in the on in the train, so the, the capacity is rough, roughly one and a half. So there we go. Here's here's a train to come come back down to fill it all up again. So they they now don't have to be synchronised quite as well. Um, I've also put double double the number of each of these there is. So there's a second train going up to space carrying the petroleum gas and there's a second train carrying the petroleum gas down from big oil to bring it to here. So they again we, we, we've uh, we've messed around with the sinking of the trains but it works quite well. It, it seems to it seems to be working to keep the system happy. Now the da slight downside is the trains don't fill up quite as quickly as they do when they're pumping directly from one to another. Uh, admittedly via these these pipes but still it, it is slightly slower but never mind we can deal with that. However putting in these extra trains had a couple of side effects. On the one hand, up here in Norbit, there wasn't there wasn't then enough room in the uh, in the in the fluid pause station. So you see, all the fluid trains will come up, will load up on the ground, then they'll come up and they'll park here until they're needed somewhere. So these trains are all waiting until they're needed. Here comes that petroleum gas train we were just looking at. That one will pull in, but because that's needed, it's going to immediately pull back out again like that, and then go off and uh, to take to deliver that petroleum gas. So that's working as expected. But if we if the system it goes goes to idle, we might not have enough stations here anymore. And so I put in a bunch of extra ones up here. There. This, this, this is just a copy paste of the of the system down here. The, uh, the the belts are bringing in the batteries, taking away the dead batteries. It's all exactly as you'd expect, but it means there's a bit more space for them to park. More seriously, with the extra trains bringing the petroleum gas over here, 
Big Oil was no longer capable of, of loading them up quickly enough. So over here we have have the have this station where the where the trains are being filled up. So trains were coming in and then they were trying they were filling it with petroleum gas here and then going off to bring it over to where we needed it. Um, and you'll notice now I've got an extra bit of uh, stacker here so that if both trains end up over here they can park here and it won't cause problems. And so yes we didn't have enough we didn't have uh, in, enough petroleum gas coming through. And there were a couple of problems here. The the biggest most severe one was that we didn't have enough um, crude oil being brought in. So now as you see a train has just arrived to drop some off. But but we didn't have enough mines digging it up around the factory because, well, we're playing we're playing space exploration crash to Rio 2, and that means that eventually all of your mines, all of your oil patches will run out. We had various oil mines scattered around the factory, like this one here, where where actually these pumps do still have some oil left, but you can see there's been lots of others we've, we've had to remove because they ran out of oil, so they were then completely useless. These ones do seem to actually still have several million left in each of them, so maybe they were just much, much denser patches. Who knows? But anyway, we weren't getting the oil out fast enough from these sort of patches and so uh, Tristan and I went out and we put down some extra extra oil mines um, I put in this one over here where we've got a load of pump jacks um, and then a load more pump jacks up here they're all pumping into these pipes which then lead down into the in, into the tanks down here we can fill the tanks up from those and then a train can come out grab the oil and then take it off to wherever it's needed and this is going to help we now have a lot more oil available so that one down there Tristan said he did another couple to the northwest so that's probably Probably, probably this one. I'm, I'm not sure. I don't even know where the pipe. Oh, the pipe's coming over here to maybe, maybe this, this one. And he said he did a second one as well. I did spot another one a moment ago. It might, might be this one down here. Um, no, those, those are set up by Mark. I don't know. He says he set up two, and they were off to the northwest. So I'm not sure. But it doesn't really matter. The other thing, the other thing that's quite nice to notice is as we look around, is that there's quite a lot of oil patches. There's another seven and a half million available there. Those are the ones I did. There's four and a half million over there. There's a massive one, oh, no, there's a, seven million up here. Maybe that's the one Tristan did, who knows. Uh, but there, there are quite a lot of oil patches around, so we should be okay for a good long time. We, but in the worst case, we can always head off to uh, Erio up here. This is an oil moon, so you can see there's massive quantities of oil here. So we can always send, we can always expand out to there if we need to. But we haven't needed to yet, and hopefully we won't have to. There is plenty of, there does seem to be plenty of supply down here. And so, now we have lots and lots of oil coming in, but we still had a bit of a problem with throughput. So, there were all of these refineries over here, and they were... Some of them were working, some of them weren't. We didn't have, we didn't have enough, in a, we, we didn't have the throughput with the pipes to bring the oil in. And so I did another upgrade. I've switched over to the fluids must flow ductings. And so here we, we, we're, we're able to pull massive quantity of the oil out of this tank really, really quickly, put it into these huge fat pipes. And that can then pump it over, pass it over to here, where then, as you can see, we've got all these bits along here leading into all of the uh, all the refineries here. And now, you can, as you can see now, we've either got green lights or yellow lights on every single one of these. So these are all completely, these are all either running or have managed to fill up their buffers. So we're, we're producing it nice and quickly here. And then in order to really go to town with that, I've then added in the, the a second one, a second set of ducts for the, uh, for the petroleum gas that's bringing it out here, up round the top here, and over to the station we were looking at earlier, so we've now got so we've now got the uh, petroleum gas being brought over really quickly. These tanks are full, completely full. This system is working really, really well. I also ran an, an additional pipe down from the an additional duct, sorry, down from the duct intake here that, that passes it down to the rest of the oil processing. So down here, where we're making well, there's more petroleum gas being made here, and then down here we're doing the light, heavy, and heavy and more light processing. And so these these are now all brought in by duct, except for here I couldn't quite squeeze a duct exhaust in here, but it's linked in from both of these duct exhausts. I'm sure it's going to be fine. We now, so we now have all of the oil being distributed by these massive pipes, and that's making a huge difference to the amount of throughput we can get here. It's much, much better. And as I was finishing this off, somebody in the in chat mentioned that you can actually use the uh, the ducts in space as well, which I hadn't realised. And this is this is this is amazing. So over here, where we're unloading the petroleum gas out of those trains, rather than just having this crappy little pipe taking it away down here, which was not keeping up with the demand, especially once I put all the speed modules in, I've now got a duct intake, a massive duct rolling down here. And the other fantastic thing about these is look how far you can go underground with these. You get used to the normal the underground pipes down on on Norvis, which can go I don't know twenty square or something like that. Then you get up to space and you find that a space underground pipe can only do five and it's pathetic. Uh, but then you, then you get these and they go a bajillion miles underneath all of this. It's, it's, it's fantastic. I was so happy to discover this and I think I'm going to have to start using these all over the place. I can't believe I didn't realise this before. It's incredible. In some ways it's incredibly frustrating but never mind. Anyway, yes, these can then bring the uh, bring the petro petroleum gas down to here where it's needed in order to make the chemical gel. I've got this duct out ex exhaust dumping into this pipe here, and that's enough to keep these these machines very very happy. And also all the ones over here, it's keeping them happy too. I haven't beaconed these ones, although I have moduled them, and that means we've now got 
Well, we've got a reasonably good flow of the, of the uh, chemical gel coming out. You can see the train's pulled in over here. It is two th it is three quarters full now, so it's gone fairly well. But the, the, the problem we're still coming up against is if we look at the recipe here, you can see it takes 100 petroleum gas to make 20 chemical gel. And so that means we need to bring in five of these trains full of petroleum gas in order to fill up the chemical gel train once. And we can't put in any sort of productivity modules because we're up in space. I don't think there are any other recipes for chemical gel, but let's have a quick look and I'll feel very silly if it turns out there's a much better one that we should have moved on to. Nope, all we have here is the standard recipe I'm using at the moment and one for taking it out of barrels. So no, there isn't, there isn't a better one way to make it. There isn't a better way to make plasma stream either, you just have the chemical gel recipe or you take it out of a, an effectively a barrel. And the same with ion stream, you have the plasma stream recipe or you take it out of a canister. There aren't any secret bonus better ways to make these things that I haven't discovered, it's just straight up you need you need to bring up your five trains of petroleum gas in order to make your one train of, uh, of, of chemical gel. Now maybe we should have planned ahead and with, with you know, a perfect foresight and all that sort of thing. And we shouldn't be bringing up a 121 train with a petroleum gas in it, we should be bringing up a 151 train or something like that. So it's much bigger, it can fit a lot more in it and we, each time the train comes up we can fill one of these wagons or something like that. But we ha we aren't doing that so we're just going to have to go for, for go for the sending lots and lots of trains approach and just hope for the best. Th this has been a bit of a, a, bit, a little bit of a crisis should we say. <laughs> I do hope that given a bit of time we'll catch up and we'll start to have start to have decent amounts of chemical gel as well let's see at the moment if we set the train to get leave manual leave automatically we can go to chemical gel uh, drop and actually it seems like it's not leaving so maybe we have actually caught up looking over here the plasma the plasma generation is running the ion stream generation is running we're producing ion stream over here an ion stream train has just arrived the question is where is the where is everything getting taken to because there are other places that request these things so energy science requests the plasma stream and is slightly closer so it gets it before the sp spaceport um, over here we get the the chemical gel sometimes goes to the bioscience but maybe maybe just maybe we've got yes we have we've got lucky some some of the, or we've managed to now fill start filling up the buffers a little bit some ion stream has made it over to the spaceport and now we're going to be to start filling up our spaceships and they will be able to start leaving so there we go that was, this one's now well it's um it's nearly there it's got to 35,000 out of the 36,000 it's watching for so fairly soon we should see this leaving although there's still a bit of a problem with the sulfur uh, we'll touch on that in a moment <laughs> um, but yes you can hear the ships leaving now snowdrop has gone Njord has gone Bigrid has gone Taros has gone Talos has gone Oliran Stardust there's, there's lots of these lots of these spaceships have now finally been able to leave so we've got to the point where we've actually satiated some of the uh, some of the appetites along here for for the ion stream uh, and so yes things are getting much much better so even in the time I've been talking in, in, in the, the last 20 minutes while I've been making this video some of the, the, the problem has started to get started to fix itself we've started to fill up the buffers and things are going a lot better and look at that we've had another another train load arrive that's another 60,000 ion stream so so things seem now to be kind of just about getting under control kind of maybe almost <laughs> Moving on, the next area I want to talk about is back down on Talos again. And yes, we've we've looked at this planet before, but things have changed a little a little bit down here um, because I've decided I decided it was time to expand the Naquium processing because we we just need so much Naquium. Um, and I'm just looking at this up here. One of the things I've done we'll start we'll start from the very beginning from the, start from the top. So the trains come down the elevator over here carrying their load of crushed Naquitite. They'll pull in over here and they'll start unloading. And so I've dropped in an upgrade planner across here to upgrade all of the these, these were previously red belts, as you can see by the remains left over here. So I've upgraded them to green with the intention of being able to unload the train a lot more quickly. Um, I've then upgraded this belt, from, this was previously a green one, as you can see again there, to, an, to a purple one. And actually it occurs to me that I could remove that and put it in somewhere over here like this wow like this so that will at least save some of these um some of these uh, purple belts we're trying to use because they are rather expensive so saving some of them would, would be a good idea uh, it will enable us to do a little bit more of the upgrading along here but this isn't going to this isn't going to start flowing properly until we've got a lot more purple belts around here and available in order to get this upgraded all the way down because in order to get more naquium out at the other end over here we're going to need more crushed naquitite flowing in at the top because we had the system running as fast as it possibly could 
So in order to do that, faster belt coming in, and then I put in this additional belt here that will bring half a green belt down the side here, and then top it up along here, fill it so it'll fill in the the, uh, the side of this belt here when this one when once it's all been used up by the first um, two machines along here. We've then got some more that can be used by, well, the rest of the machines. It's still pro potentially not going to be quite enough. Maybe I should have said three, three and three with these machines. I'm not, I'm not sure. Maybe, I need, maybe I'll need to actually bring in a full green belt along here and then unload some more of it over here. But my biggest concern about this is that we're not going to then have enough to keep the uh, powder riser over here running as well. However, that said, if it gets out of balance then the system will keep, it'll be kept balanced because if either of these get up to a thousand then it turns off the other set of, it turns off the appropriate set of machines so the other ones can catch up. So no matter how I, how badly I balance it with all of these uh, splitters up here, the system will always keep itself in balance by just turning the various inputs on and off as, as required. And so for every 10,000 crushed naquitite that come in, we will get the same number of naquium ingots coming out at the other end, no matter how much I mess the system up over here. It may be faster or slower, but it will still you'll still get exactly the same amount of output. It won't make any significant difference. As part of this upgrade, I needed more of the, uh, the anion exchange beads, the blue beads over here. So I'll put in an extra couple of these machines. They could do with some more um, productivity modules, but I'll bring those over when I come over with the extra purple belts. That's fine. I I can do that, no problem. And then I had to do an additional upgrade over here. So these three machines are now have their own belt that's passed down here. We're pulling out the um, the cation exchange beads that are produced on the output here. So it takes in in the blues and gives off the reds. So they're being pulled out and passed around here through that splitter. But then I've got another. Then I've got this green belt coming down here, all the way down to this purple splitter here, which hopefully. Uh, will mean that there's now enough throughput to get all of the enriched naquium through and into the, into this uh, chest down here, allowing it to then be passed on down here, over to here, to be made into all of the further naquium bits and pieces that we need. And in order to get the whole system running a bit quicker, I've put in some extra furnaces on the side over here. So we've, we've now got the, the, the extra two rows of them in over here, well, nearly two rows, someone left a beacon in the way, but that's gonna give us a significant boost of another sort of, I don't know, 50% of what we had before. Um, and I think this throughput should be able to keep up with that, at least when we're not taking crystals away, which most of the time we're not. So that, that I think will work nicely. But it, once again, it is working for, waiting for its productivity modules to be brought over because there's still a few things that need to be, I say, need to be brought over and finished off here. It has occurred to me actually that I could probably use an underground purple belt like this, get rid of all of that up the middle, and then remove that one and put it down here, get rid of that bit in the middle, um, and then, yeah, without having to bring out any extra belt parts, because of the sheer length of these purple underground belts, that's now going to be fine and actually work, which is quite nice. So um, yeah, that's a, that was a nice easy upgrade. I uh, I don't know why I didn't think of that last week, but uh, I thought of it now and, and, and chucked it in, so I can do that in, in in the real game when when we next stream. I also discovered there's a problem with the unloading system over here. I think mostly because I was trying to bring over too much of the Vitalic reagent and. On the one hand, I'm not sure whether I was bringing over too much or whether it's just that we need so much of it in order to fill up an entire spaceship with naquium ingots that I'd, that the, uh, there was just too much of it required. I've played around with some of the numbers a little bit. I've reduced the amount number of iron, ing iron ingots we're bringing out and the number of the uh, vitalic acid barrels because those both seem to be excessive. Uh, so as you can see, we've still got an awful lot of um, iron ingots here. We've still got a lot of reagent there, but I've put in this extra warehouse here that's taking some of the pressure off because it, it will take in the vulcanite, the methane ice, and the vitalic reagent that are being brought in by the by the small train from, from Norbit. Uh, and so that takes some of the pressure off this warehouse. Looking at this though, I think I've got the number completely wrong here. Why are you not passing through? So it's less if less than a thousand and you've got oh you have got a thousand. So you know what, that should be like ten thousand or something, because there's this I clearly got the numbers wrong there. That should be a much higher number. We can easily fit if, if that's yeah, a thousand is two rows, so we can easily fit ten thousand in. We could probably fit significantly we could probably fit twenty, thirty thousand in. At the moment we've got twelve thousand over there. Yeah, let's make this twenty thousand. And we'll let that let, let that trickle across, and then that's going to reduce, complete, remove the pressure over here. So whenever a train comes down, it's going to be able to unload without any problems, and that's what's in, that's what matters because we did get a train stuck here, and we don't want to get a train stuck here. That's just going to lead to problems. <laughs> So having done all of this upgrading, this means I'm now going to be processing this at a rate of about a purple belt. And a purple belt is 90 items a second. So that's two blue belts, which is the same as two space belts. And so that means I'm going to need to double the production rate out here in Stardust. Because at the moment, as we've talked about before, we've got four belts coming in here. It's a four to one process. So we've got one belt. It's split over two belts, but we've got one belt overall of the crushed Naquitite coming out here. So that means when the system's down on Talos and running full speed, they're using the uh, crushed Naquitite up at twice 
twice the rate we're generating it at. So yeah, I'm going to need, I've been saying this before, I'm going to need to put in another copy of this system up here somewhere to and then and, and, and upgrade the train systems, probably put in more Naquium mines and all that sort of stuff, just to get the Naquium flowing in at the rate we're going to need it at. But as a sort of a temporary sort of stopgap method uh, to improve to improve it a little bit, with in a slightly easier way, I've actually created an additional two ships that are flying out to Stardust. The first one of which was named the Starstruck and is currently on its way out uh, back at coming out to uh, Stardust in order to pick up some more uh, Naquia. Unfortunately, I made a bit of a mistake with the ships, and while I was building the Starstruck, I uh, told two of the ships that were approaching Nor uh, Norvis to turn around and go away again, um, because I forgot they were going to need to refuel with the ion stream that I was mentioning earlier. That was has become a crisis, but you know that's that's unrelated, and so that means that rather unfortunately, the Stardust Three with a Vengeance there and the Stardust Express up here have both completely run out of uh, ion stream fuel, and so they're 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 not going anywhere. They're just sitting here dead in space, and so in the next stream, I'm going to have to mount some kind of rescue mission, fly out to them, build up a, a machine to uh, to empty some ion stream canisters, and then try and get some more into these tanks over here, and then get the ships flying again because as it is they're just they're not they're not working we're going to need to come and get so a rescue mission is required so i felt rather silly when i realized what i'd done here um because well uh, yeah I, I should have known that the ships need to come in and, and fill up i did check their energy beam receivers to make sure they had enough energy and you see this one's still at 9500 degrees c so it's used it's used less than 10 percent of the available power before it gets before it needs to recharge again but i forgot to check the tanks and i should have known because we've had problems with this before i should have known that there isn't, isn't enough fuel in these tanks to do a second trip out there. So yes, that was rather silly. There is a new version of space exploration available and it's had some major updates, particularly if you're playing with uh, K2. We haven't actually installed the update yet, but we've done a little bit of sort of preparatory work for it. So for example, over here on Njord, we've set this system up here where we're cleaning the dirty water. We heard that cleaning dirty water was going to start outputting sand as well instead of stone. And so we put this, uh, Mike has put in an additional splitter hill. It just puts it on a disposal belt that takes it down here to be, uh, well, it was being turned into sand, but now it would just flow past and come down here to go into the sand system that's being being used for all kinds of things like making uh, making hydrogen chloride. However, it turns out that it's not the uh, it's, it's not the iridium dirty water processing that's now that now outputs um, sand instead of stone. It's just the normal dirty water processing. So this actually wasn't necessary. And I was going to say over on Njord, Tristan's done the same thing, but actually it doesn't look like he has. Maybe he, maybe he didn't bother in the end because he realised it wasn't actually required because uh, he's still just filtering the stone out over here. Maybe, maybe he discovered, or, or maybe there's somewhere else where he's cleaning the dirty Holmium water because I thought he's because he did say he'd done the same thing. And then over here we've got another set of dirty water cleaning, which and presumably down the bottom of it is yes. Here we go. So there's a stone, and then presumably if there was sand, it'd be filtered out. Yes, over round this way, and then sent back onto the disposal chute to be got rid of along with everything else. So you know you. you could uh, it's it's a good thing to it's, a, it's good that he's do, he's done this this it just turns out that it's actually not necessary because we're um we, the, that that those recipes haven't been changed there are a few other things that have been changed though and we'll look at this more next week but the biggest one of them is going to be the Vitamaland recipe over on big red and so there's going to be some big changes needed to all of the systems over here because we're going to need a lot of i think we're going to need a lot of fertilizer for this and other things besides so we'll we'll take we'll uh, we'll delve into that more next week but i wanted to mention that we've at least we we try to make a start on getting ready for it it just turned out the start that we made wasn't actually required <laughs> And so I've been talking for a while now. I think this is a good time to end the stream. I've got to the I've got to the end of a sort of a big chunk of what I've been talking about. Um, so we'll be back tomorrow with another video that will carry on with uh, with what, what what all of what we talk I've been talking about here and going into more detail about what everyone else has been doing because this has been a rather Lawrence heavy episode. But then the first one tends to be because my ego insists that I uh, I go I talk about what I did first. <clears throat> so uh, yes, we'll be looking into what 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 else has been going on during during the last stream in the in the next videos. So yes, come back for the, that one tomorrow uh, on. Monday we shall be back as usual for more K2SE excitement and shenanigans where we shall be dealing with the upgrade. Um, Mike will be con continuing to look into Arcospheres. I'll be going out to try and rescue those spaceships and many more fun things besides I'm sure. Then on Wednesday, I should be back to play some more Satisfactory. We've got trains and things going on now, and I'm trying to sort of trying to build out a new factory in a slightly different area that's going to be a little bit more streamlined and, and not designed by a complete noob, just designed by a partial noob, because I've, I've learned a few lessons here and there. Uh, and then there'll be more videos next weekend as well, of course, with continued Factorio updates. So, as ever, thank you very much for watching. Please make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on anything, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.